Hi, and welcome to this third video of uh, my series on avoidable mistakes. And in this third video, we're going to talk about the right moment in chess to take a concrete, to make a concrete uh, decision or con concession, because it is very, uh, well, it is not very usual that you can just win a game, uh, you know, just playing normal moves and waiting for the mistakes of your opponents. Usually you really have to catch the moment when you should, uh, let's say, bring the coup de grace, as we say in French, to your opponent. And uh, there is very often in a game of chess a moment when if you want to concretize your advantage, you should be ready to make a concession and to perhaps give away some of your position assets to get some other assets and to improve and to make progress until uh, you get the full point. So first I'm going for once to show you a good example of my games with a nice victory against uh, the very experienced Grandmaster Arthur Yusupov. That game was played in Swiss League many years ago. I was white, so it was some sort of Queen's Gambit, so I'm just playing the opening quite fast here. My opponent probably played D takes C4 a little bit quickly, a little bit too quickly, because Black usually waits for the bishop to develop, to then take on C4 and force bishop takes on C4 again. Obviously, my opponent took on, D on C4 because he thought otherwise I'm going to take on D5, so that also makes sense, but I still believe it was a little bit early. Bishop c4. So a few moves were played. And here my opponent gave me a clear occasion to push d5, which looks very dangerous. If my opponent can play bishop b7, then we get a normal uh, isolated pawn position, which is perhaps good for me. I mean, I can put my rook here, my queen there, perhaps bring my bishop to have some mating ideas. Um, later, my knight to e5. Uh, this is just a normal position, but this was a very important moment to uh, calculate d5, which is a concession because, of course, he's white and playing an advantage. And by playing d5, I'm completely, let's say, equalizing the pawn structure. And if I cannot prove my advantage, my advantage with my dynamic play, uh, then I'm going to, well, I'm not going to win that game. So d5 had to be calculated, and well, a few things I had to see. So for example, e takes d5, knight d5. If bishop b7, I'm going to take the bishop pair, and this is already a success. So this I did not calculate much more, because the bishop pair is a success, and I'm happy if I can get that. What I had to see is that after knight takes d5, I had bishop takes d5. If the rook goes to b8, I'm going to trap bishop g3. And if rook a7, I have rook takes c8 and bishop b7. So this is an important tactics in the game. And after d5, in case of knight takes d5, then I would take with the bishop still attacking the rook. e d5, bishop e7, queen e7, knight d5. The best square for the queen here is d8 because if it goes for example to d6 this is going to be a very bad surprise since queen takes e6 is met with knight e7 check so queen d8 and this position is actually quite important because again if my opponent manages to complete his development with knight e5 bishop b7 then he's going to solve his problems um, but here i have a very important move which is rock c6, and it's just actually winning the game because black is completely paralyzed. If my opponent plays rock b8, then I'm going to play rock d6 and look at the black pieces. Uh, the queen can't even go to e8 because of rock e1. Let's say rock e8, knight d4 to go to c6, and this is just a total disaster for black for example bishop d5 queen d5 there, there could be some lines like this but in the end black is going to lose material on the d5 
And after after rook c6, rook d6 is a very deadly threat. So my opponent played knight c5 because this actually happened in the game. And I just took a free pawn on b6. And of course, the position was already after just 19 moves, completely winning. So what does it mean? That means that even when we have a positional game like this one, a typical isolated pawn position, when there is a tempting move, you should push your calculation. If one move is tempting, well, you should not play it too quickly because, well, you may miss that your opponent is going to solve his problems easily. You should definitely try to push your calculation as much as possible. I mean, when I calculated until here, I was really not sure until I see that move, until I saw that move rock c6, because if bishop b7 can be played, I'm really not sure I have any advantage here. So I was really wondering whether whether I should play d5 or not, but I really forced myself to think uh, as much as possible. And when I saw that rock c6 was so strong, I decided to go for d5, and that brought me a full point against uh, Arthur Yusupov. So that was a positive example of when to and how to make concrete concrete uh, decision and concession. I'm going to show you a second example. This uh, another game of mine, but this time not a very positive example since I drew a winning endgame. That was played many many years ago i was white against timothy ends that was played in the in the french youth uh, league so uh for uh, players under 16 year olds so you can imagine that that was a very long time ago but i had one of the most interesting end games here as a more interesting than well one of the most interesting end games of my career actually although my rating by then was just uh, was much lower than it is right now and here i have two choice or two well obviously white is much much better because my king is on d4 it's very close to just uh go to c5 and uh to completely i mean black is completely dominated the queen on c6 is also very good uh, my bishop well we could call it a good one because all the opponent pawns are on light squares on the other hand of course black is uh, very solid so it is not so easy to break through but let's say that my bishop on e2 is still better than the bishop on c8 and here i had the possibility to just try to turn around play a move like queen c5 because that end game for example would be an easy win for me king c7 i would just play b3 then I would play c4. My opponent would, let's say, take everything. Bishop c8. And I would easily get him into Zagzwang, for example, like that. I just wait one move. And then bishop c4. And then my king is going to enter somewhere. And that would be a very easy win. But of course, after queen c5, I am giving my opponent a possibility to decline the queen actions and play queen d7. Instead, I could have played queen d6 check, but I did not dare to make that uh, move because if it does not win, then uh, if it doesn't win after queen takes d6, then uh, of course I would be very disappointed to make a draw without even uh, trying more. But actually, more calculation would have uh, led me to the right decision to play that move queen d6 check. Here my king should go to e5, bishop b7, and actually here I'm breaking through with b3 and c4, as we saw before. So d4 is not really a move here because I can play, for example, well, maybe even c5 and then queen takes d4, or maybe just bishop d3 to block everything, and this is just an easy win for white. So the best for black would be to take and perhaps play bishop f3 bishop which i cannot take otherwise black is going to queen his f pawn bishop d3 my opponent can try to harass me because i'm not sure about this pawn endgame. game 
this is the critical uh, the critical maneuver. I mean, if bishop f1, bishop c6, this is not going to be easy to break through. And this is actually what made me afraid in the game, that here I could not find a fourth twin. I should add that bishop to e4 is a forced move here because if bishop c6 to defend against uh, c takes b5, now this is a very easy win because I'm going to play c5 and I'm going to bring my bishop there. And bishop d5 is never possible because of bishop takes f5. So that would be an easy win. So playing bishop e4 to try to force my bishop to f1 so it cannot uh, so easily attack the, the e6 pawn is very smart. Uh, this is a position that we could have reached by force after queen d6 check. And of course, it required a long calculation I have to take if I want to play for a win. King takes e4, b takes e4, king d4. For example, well, king c6 is might be a smart move. King takes d6 is the most natural one. King takes e4. I, I did not want to enter such a pawn endgame, which I didn't know if it was winning or not. But it actually, it's actually a pretty easy win for white, since uh, I'm going to well, I'm dominating the position and I'm going to win the g pawn. Um, here, black could have played e5, but after f5, it is not really improving his situation. If king is 7 king d5, and I'm winning the pawn. Instead of king takes d6, black could have tried to lose one tempo like that. But anyway, so f5 now, that would be the trick, that the king is not only 7 but d7, and black would be in time to get my b pawn and to make a draw here okay and it's going to be a draw obviously so not f5 but just king f6 and i'm going to pick the other pawn that way and now my opponent is uh, not in time i'm going to actually queen my f pawn with check and that's going to be an easy win. So anyway, that was the right moment to take a concrete decision. And instead, I started to, well, just turn around, give checks, and do nothing. And, uh, well, at some point, simply uh, nothing was happening. And at some point, well, the game ended in a draw because I could not, uh, I did not have any good opportunity to exchange queens anymore. And well, I tried, I tried, I played 99 moves in total, but the game was a draw. So a very fascinating end game, I think, after queen d6 check, which deserves a lot of calculation. So when you feel like you probably reach the momentum to make a concrete decision, I understand that that end game would be, that end game is extremely complicated to calculate until the end. but. That same reasoning applies to much simpler position than when you that when you have an opportunity to make a concrete decision, uh, you should. That's the moment where you should spend your time and not, not try and I mean not like great job for example with spending half an hour for each detail. You have to be able to play a few normal moves fast enough so that when you reach a concrete decision like I had in that game. Uh, you have enough time to calculate as much as possible and collect the point. So there are, of course, many more examples of that that, I'm, that I don't have time to show in that video. Uh, you can read more in my book about avoidable mistakes, um, concrete, about concrete decisions and uh, prophylactic decisions, and so on. But these are, I think, two good examples of, uh, well, also, two good uh, strategical uh, examples um, on how could white win the game. So remember uh, to really, uh, when you reach, when you feel like you reach the momentum, well, do not think like, okay, this is going to, I'm going to have another chance within a few moves. 
a momentum is a momentum and at this moment you should really give yourself 100 percent and calculate as much as you can so i hope you enjoyed these two examples and third video and do not miss the fourth one that is coming right now